Okay, these are very brief, very short comments on the subject of functions of bounded variations, absolutely continuous functions, and the version of the fundamental theorem of calculus for Lebesgue integration. First, I will observe that a function on a segment AB is called a function of bounded variation when the quantity like this is finite. So the right hand side here is the supremum, which is taken over all finite partitions of the interval AB. If the supremum delivers a finite value, then function f is called the function of bounded variations, and the value of the supremum is called the var variation of the function f over the segment AB. The quantity of variation it exhibits the typical properties of a norm. For instance, it's, uh, it satisfies the triangle inequality, like this. It is a homogeneous quantity, like this. Uh, the only mm, mm, definite property of the norm which variation is missing, it's not exact, meaning that um, there are functions, non-zero functions, in fact they are constants, which deliver zero variation, but they are not themselves zeros. Uh, also, variation possesses the additivity property in the sense that the variation of the larger interval is composed out of the variations of the smaller subintervals, where C is the splitting point. And the, another simple observation about the variation is that the variation is this, just equal to the difference of the endpoints of the function given that the function f is monotone. All of these properties I leave for you to establish, they are all relatively simple, but require a careful epsilon type of argument involving the supremum, the definition of supremum. Now, the next thing which I want to just, uh, mention is that uh, with every function of bounded variation, you can associate two other functions, two other, in fact, non-decreasing functions, and that's how you do it. First, you call the function f plus, which is just the variation of this structure, and x here is the that's the that's where the dependence on x sitting. Now for the second function, you take the difference like this. It is relatively simple observation to conclude that actually that these two functions they will be non-decreasing. Uh, they they will connect uh, the connection between f and f plus and f minus is like this. Yeah, is like this. In fact, uh, I do have a bit of an argument which shows that the functions are not decreasing. And here it is. If my, if I fix the two points x1 and x2, one is less than the other. And if I start looking at the difference of the function values of these two points, f plus and f minus, this is just a difference of the variations like that. Because of the additivity property of the variation, this just goes into the variation over the segment x1 and x2, which we know is non negative quantity, and that's why you got the non-decreasingness of f plus function. The f minus is a similar argument. You take the difference in the point x2 and the point x1 is the, by the definition again, by this definition and by this definition, it reduces to something like this. Now, you observe that points x2 and x1 together, they produce a partition of the interval like that and the variation is a supremum over all partitions, that's why this variation is larger than this bracket, and again you end up with a non-zero quantity. And that's, that's my introduction into the functions of bounded variations, quick introduction into functions of bounded variations. Now the next subject I'm just, I want to discuss in these comments is the subject of absolutely continuous functions. This is the next step in development of functions of bounded variations, and here it is. The function on segment AB it is called a function of bounded, uh, absolute, it, it is called an absolutely continuous if, and that's a typical epsilon delta definition, for every positive epsilon there is a delta, such that as long as I have a sequence of points such that they combine increments is less than delta, the combined increments of function values will be less than epsilon. It is a straightforward observation to see that the function of absolute, absolute uh, sorry, that the absolutely continuous function is inevitably a function of bounded variation. It, you can in fact produce a sort of control here in terms of epsilon and delta. 
Uh, it is also a straightforward observation that the absolutely continuous function is simply continuous. <coughs> now, the more interesting conclusion, in fact, it's a harder conclusion, is that if you fun if you're dealing with a function of which is absolutely continuous, uh, it will be a function of bounded variation. So for that function, you can construct the f plus and f minus components. So it is a little bit more difficult observation that actually these two components they also will be absolutely continuous. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important observation uh, on our pathway towards the fundamental theorem of the calculus. Now, having these two functions, non-decreasing functions, which are absolutely continuous, and in particular they are continuous, I can construct measures on a semi-ring of half open intervals like this. We know very well that if you construct a measure from the function which is continuous, in fact, only right continuous, then the constructed measure will be sigma additive, and it will admit the extension, typical normal, standard, canonical, the bag extension. Yeah, where a1 and b1, it's just some subintervals in the intro a and b. Now, given that the original functions f plus and f minus they were absolutely continuous, we can say more about these measures. Not only they will be sigma additive they also will be absolutely continuous with respect to the standard Lipeck measure. And that's what it said here. And plus and then minus, these are not only sigma additive, but they are absolutely continuous with respect to the Lipeck measure. This is a very important step, and the term absolutely continuous is used as it is used in the in my comments on radon nicotine uh, radon nicotine theorem and the decomposition of measure and the argument behind this that's the hardest argument uh, in these comments which I which I'm not presenting I'm leaving for you I'm leaving this for you to discover this argument but that's the that's the hardest part in the whole comments here to see that uh, the measure associated with the distribution function like this uh, with the absolutely continuous distribution function it will be the absolutely continuous measure in terms of uh, radon nicotine theorem and the decomposition of measure now given the radon nicotine theorem I can now say that there are functions g plus and g minus which are summable such that my measures admit the following decomposition representation and now we are almost done with establishing the fundamental theorem of the calculus because now we say that if I take the difference of my original function values in the endpoints, splitting this f into f plus and f minus, using the measures like that and using the radon nicotine derivative like that, we conclude that this will be equal to the integral like this, where g is the difference of these two radon nicotine derivatives. And that will be summable functions as a summable function as a difference of two summable functions. So we're almost done now because now here's my left hand side, and that's how my right hand side look. All I have to do now I have to see that this one is in fact, or in fact, this function is in fact is a derivative, and that's how I do that. I take the quotient like this, I observe that this quotient then will be equal. To the expression like this. I just replaced b1 here with x plus h and a1 with x and divided by h everything. And now I conclude by saying that because this is a summable function, it is the something we have we established in our uh, in our assignment number three that for a summable function almost every point is the the back point, which means that this kind of integrals will converge to the value of the function itself at the point x. And we see that my function that f now is almost everywhere differentiable. And this g function, which appeared from radon nicotine theorem like this, is in fact derivative of my function f. So in fact we conclude that we have the expression like this. And all of this came from the original assumption that the function f is absolutely continuous. In fact, this is reversible. If you have a function for which you have the expression like this, the function f will be absolutely continuous.
and g here almost everywhere equal to the derivative pointwise derivative of the original function f. These are my brief comments on the three subjects functional bounded variations, absolutely continuous functions, and fundamental theorem of, the, of calculus called the Beck integration.